tonight on the new Inventors, a way to make a ute bigger, something you'll need if you ever want to clean a sugar refinery, and a way to make sure little boys hit the target. Welcome. Also tonight, a motorcycle that's also a hearse. First to our panel, and tonight it's a great pleasure to welcome agricultural scientist Chris Russell, journalist and inventor Christine Kininmonth, and interior designer Alison Page. Welcome all. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. How many times have you seen a ute driving along with something sticking out the back or with its back tailgate down because it's carrying a long load. For me, I think it's about 43 times. Anyway, one of our next inventors found out he couldn't fit his trail bike in his ute. So this is what he and his co-inventor came up with. Putting your ute tailgate down gives you the ability to carry a bigger load. But you can't risk anything falling off the back. That's why we invented this. The cargo cage is an aluminium fence that fits onto any ute tailgate. You attach it using the existing latch holes and secure it with straps. Sliding bars at the side let you adjust the cage to fit the size of the load. For added safety, tail lights are mounted on the back. When you don't need it, it simply flips back into the tray of the ute and the tailgate closes as normal. It can also stop smaller items like groceries and tools sliding around the back of the tray. Whether you're at work or play, our invention will give you the peace of mind that your load is secure. Please welcome from Brisbane, Andrew Cumming and John Ingham. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Hi John. Yeah. Thank you for coming in. Uh, someone whose trail bike couldn't your trail bike couldn't both fit on the back. Both oh, both trail bikes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you've added, the, made the load bigger. Yep. Well, yep. I mean, it's a clever idea, isn't it? Let's see how it goes on. Because it only, it's pretty light, isn't it? Yep. It's only what? about ten kilos. Ten kilos. And uh, you just locate it into the. That just goes in like this. There's a little and a pin there. Pin that goes in. Yep. Just like that, and then you... Uh, your straps are secured here. There. And then there's a little... Oh, so that, and that's all secure yes. and you've got a big yep. thing. John, how much are they going to cost? Uh, they'll be under $1,000. Under $1,000. Well, mm -hmm. come over and, and sit down. Um, it makes a ute sort of more versatile. I mean, you could just get a longer ute, but maybe you don't want a longer ute. No. Like if you only use that every month or something. Absolutely, especially with the new twin cab utes on, on the market these days. Yeah, right. Chris? Yes, uh, I, th I think this is a great idea, especially for a farm tool. But I guess one of the differences here is that, you know, if someone leaves the tailgate down, you know, without one of these, it's mainly just for over length loads to be able to fit in. Whereas now this is going to encourage people to actually put the full weight and separate weighted loads on the tailgate itself. How, uh, not all tailgates have got a, a strap holding them like that one has. Mm. How's this? How's it going to work with the buckling? We, we stipulate on the unit that not to exceed the manufacturer's uh, specifications for the tailgate load. What we're doing is really encasing the tailgate so an existing load won't fall off. What, right. would, be, what would be the average tailgate load at the moment? Um, it's uh, around about 80 to 90 kilos on specific sort of vehicles. Of which so. 10 kilograms is the um, piece that you've added? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, under and if you had an overlength load and you did want an overlength load, could you actually lock it in the upright position so you could slide things under it and still have the full length if you wanted? Um, not for this particular version, but uh, it's something that we're looking at for later on. But you could take it off. You could take yeah. it right yeah. off. Leave That's it true. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, okay. Absolutely. How much extra length are you getting out of the 200, 200 oh. mil is Oops. the full extent from fully um, extended the, from the current position at the moment. So it allows you to vary the unit to varying lengths. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love the design. I really do. As soon as I saw it, I just went, this is designed perfectly. There are some other devices out there similar to this. What are the main points of difference with yours? Well, we, we can actually... Um, I've got mounts that actually to, we mount to the existing mounting bolts or the lifting lugs that are in the actual tray. So um, it, there's no drilling. Um, and this one you can actually extend as well. Is yours going to be available in other <laughs> colours? Yeah, eventually we, we will probably look at you know, anodising and that sort of thing. Which yeah. is the colours of the rainbow, really. Yeah, that's right. You know, I actually think that you could get something, you know, create a little market for yourself because that's something that 
the others aren't offering. Okay, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Summing up, yeah. Chris. Yeah, I don't know whether your intended market for this is f as a farm tool or for urban use. Um, for for urban use, you're going to have to have the lights and the registration plate fitted permanently and all that sort of thing. But particularly as a farm tool, I see it ha having great popularity uh, as against someone who's permanently always going to want a long tray. And uh, it's a very ingenious idea. So uh, I think tremendous. Christine? Yeah, I think this is the sort of invention that Australia should be producing because we can compete on manufacturing costs in this case. And it is light and, uh, as Alison says, it looks good too. Yeah, and I was just looking at it and just thinking, actually, when it's flipped back in, if you just stick a couple of cushions in there, glass <laughs> of wine, sunset, Absolutely. beautiful. Yeah, right, yeah, lovely. Beautiful. A brilliant idea. But you hadn't thought of that one. Please thank Andrew <laughs> Cumming and John Ingham. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. My name's Mike. I've built the world's first true motorcycle hearse. I'd like to give the bike riders an alternative to their final destination. Instead of being in a sidecar, which is attached to a motorcycle, this will be the motorcycle. People see it on the road, it, it creates havoc. People stop and turn and block the roads and try and follow it, trying to get photos. The colour actually came about because we didn't want to paint it black like the traditional hearse. So we thought we'd try and lighten the, the whole image of death. So we decided to pick on tangerine. Funerals have always been the final ride. So for a biker, this is the only way that they'd ever want to travel, would be on a bike for their last ride. If you want to do a bit of maintenance on a sugar refinery, and who hasn't at some point wanted to do that, it's a big task to make sure that people doing the maintenance are safe. Often, you need to shut the whole plant down. But our next invention might make that process a lot simpler. When carrying out maintenance in a plant like this sugar refinery, you need to shut off the valves that control the flow in the pipes so no liquids or gases can escape into the area where you're working. And if you can't isolate and securely lock the valve closed, then you have to shut down the whole plant to ensure the safety of the maintenance crew. My invention ensures that these valves can be quickly and simply locked in the safe position. The valve safety lockout is a device to secure processed plant valves in the closed position. To use, close the valve and slide the bolt in. The bolt slots into a disc surrounding the valve spindle and prevents it from turning, locking it into the closed position, which means no liquid or gas can escape. The device can then be padlocked so there's no chance it can be accidentally opened while work is still being carried out. My invention allows you to carry out maintenance with a maximum of safety and a minimum of interruption. Please welcome from Brisbane, Charles Shooter. Hi, Charles. Hi, Thanks Jones. for coming in. Now, you work a bit in sugar refineries, but the application of this, well, anywhere with valves, oil refineries, desalination plants, where else? Water treatment works, chemical plants, uh, petroleum refineries. Anywhere that you have a fluid being conveyed, in fact. Right. Well, so there's certainly lots of them. This is the actual, this is the actual thing, right? And if I turn it around that way, if if you want to shut or open a valve, say it's it's open there. If you want to shut it, you turn it around, and then you and then there it's locked. And and once you lock that in there. It can't move, so it can't accidentally, if you like, or even carelessly be unlocked, and that's the key to it. That's the key to it. It stops the valve from moving once it's in the locked position. And we've got a, a valve up here in, in situ, so do you want to just show us how it actually works in action? Surely. If we... What's in here, do you reckon? Like boiling hot fat or something? Yeah, let's say boiling oil. Yeah, something, OK. Something nice and dangerous. All right. Uh, very simply, we close the valve, Yep. and we now say we want to lock it, so we engage the lockout. And that's essentially doing that. So that is locking that shut. Yep. yep. It, locks, it locks the valve shut. We padlock it. Uh, engage the padlock. We take the key out. You've also got an automatic version. How does that work? Well, this is a remotely controlled valve. And if somebody in another building were to press the rock, wrong button, accidentally, of course, the valve would open. And if you happen to be working downstream in a tank, 
uh, whistle yeah. valve open, you, you would be killed. And with this, no matter what happens to your computer, you still can't actually open it physically without someone undoing that padlock. Correct. So it's a manual override of an automatic system. Absolutely, exactly what it is, a manual override that locks it. Fantastic. Come over and uh, sit down. And they would be worth... Did you say, is it, how much are they going to be worth each? Not, not a lot of money. <laughs> Good. <laughs> In fact, a, a small one like that would be 70 or $80. OK. And the bigger ones? Bigger ones, if you went to a very big valve where the diameter was, say, that size... Wow. Uh, that would cost you maybe six hundred dollars. Boy, I'd love to see a valve like that. That's a big valve, Christine. Yeah. <laughs> Charles, um, I, I think it seems like a very clever idea, and I know there are other valve locking systems on the market. Yours locks a different part of the valve, and I'm wondering why that is considered to be safer or better. What it does is it actually locks the valve spindle, not the actuator. What's uh, an actuator? The, uh, the actuator is the remote operating device. That yellow object you see on top of the valve. Are you putting that lock on every valve in a plant or do you just fit it in when you have to main do maintenance on that particular part? W what you do is identify the critical valves in a plant and you would have this device fitted to those critical valves so at any stage that you did maintenance you, you would lock them. Which would be how many would you say on a, on a big sugar refinery plant say? Well to Say in a sugar refinery, you'd have up to say a thousand valves, of which probably two or three hundred would be critical valves. Oh gosh, mm. okay. That's but a lot. I mean, That's yeah. Much. But if it's eighty thousand bucks, or even a hundred or two hundred thousand bucks, it's still in the in the scheme of things not that much money for those big manufacturers, I guess. Well, but why couldn't a mechanic take one with him and when one wasn't fitted, have it in his toolbox, take it out, whack it on, and and actually fit it himself while he's doing the work? Uh, it's problematical because the operating device is connected with pipework and electric cables, so you don't really want to remove it. But you could, in fact, do that. Have you also done any testing on this, like have, to see how much pressure it could withstand? Absolutely. Uh, in the early development stages, what we did was take a, a typical operating device and go three or four sizes larger to see where the, the sort of destructive point <laughs> was. Yeah. Break one yet? Not yet. <laughs> Very good. Chris? Yeah, Charles, uh, what, you're making this out of stainless steel, I think, is that right? Correct. Do you, I mean, given that if you've got dissimilar metals all locked together in a valve, you can have potential corrosion, which you suddenly go to use and it doesn't work. Can you, will you actually make it in different metals so it's compatible with uh, bronze valves and galvanised valves? And you, you could do so. Stainless is probably better from a corrosion point of view. And if you're worried about electrolytic uh, corrosion, it'll only happen if you, if you have a a water or a liquid atmosphere. Sure. So, um, Which they often do. Yeah. yeah. But it, it hasn't been a problem up till now. Summing up, Christine. Well, I'm just really impressed with the number of industries that this invention can be applied to. Yeah, look, you're taking, you've got a safety device that you, you've taken and made it 100% effective, which, you know, is the best kind of safety device you can have. Thank you for those kind of Yeah, I, and I think, I think really this, the, the place for this is with an actuator, not with a handle. The handle, you can just stick a padlock through the handle, but where you've got an actuator, the safest method is usually the simplest and most mechanical because there's less can go wrong with it or be overridden. And that's what you've done. So for an actuator-type valves where you've got a remote actuation, absolutely, I think it's a great idea. If you've got kids, could you adapt it for the television at home? <laughs> <laughs> Please thank Charles Shredder. Good luck with it, Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When little boys learn to wee standing up, it can all get very messy. Sometimes they lose concentration or turn around to look at something. The next thing you know, it's yuck everywhere. Here's something that could help and make doing a wee fun. in the family, you'll know they have trouble aiming when going to the toilet. And most of the time they're easily distracted and have more exciting things to do. Wee Target is a toilet training device for boys. It's a fun way to help them concentrate until the task is complete. The device sits inside the bowl just above water level. A black circle at the centre is made of heat-sensitive ink. When the child's warm urine hits the target, the ink fades to reveal a surprise picture. Then, when the toilet is flushed, the cool temperature of the water restores the ink to opaque. 
while also washing the target. It's fun and encourages boys of all ages to have a go, even the big ones. Please welcome from Lang Warren on the Mornington Peninsula in Southern Victoria, Joanna and Daniel Hames. Hello, hello, hello. And a fine uh, celluloid debut by your son Lachlan there. Oh, yes, really, really good. Very good. <laughs> and all, all three of your sons, I understand, got their aim right using this device. Definitely. And uh, <laughs> so, basically, you, it, it's warm water, isn't it? Yes. I mean, usually the thing you're using at all isn't quite as bulky no, as not this. not quite as bulky. Um, <laughs> not in my case, anyway. Oh, this is so oh, much well fun. Done. There, you can see it in there. It's fantastic. Yep. As soon as you flush... Flush, yep. And the black spot comes out. It through. goes back to blank. Yes. And again, as soon as you put this in cold water, back to blank. Yep. Got your soccer ball. And then you put in cold water. Warm water, we. We car. Cold water. So every time they, they get hit with a new opportunity to see um, something else. Exactly. Okay, yep. Come across and sit down. I just think there would be enormous marketing opportunities, but you can't imagine, for example, uh, you know, the Wiggles wanting to be on one. You wouldn't want, you know, People, yeah. really, they'd say yeah. no. But apart from that, any objects would be good. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we can use anything on it. Yeah. But at the moment, we've got four characters, so... Yeah, yeah. And how much would it cost? Um, $12 at this point. Uh, Alison? Look, I've got to confess, I'm not a mother. I did look at this and just go, is this serious? Yeah. But, you know, given how many products there are out there to help your child find the sweet spot, it's clearly a big problem. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Who are you actually marketing this to? Who's your market? Well, we need to market it to parents to start with because they're obviously buying it for their young ones. And if you're sort of grading the sizes so that, you know, when you're a starter, you can, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, that yeah, might be a bit of a problem. Can we start at the big target and then kind it's of... It's not for you, Chris. Improve? It's for kids. Well, the main Maybe. focus is really to get to the middle of that target, so it doesn't really matter the size of it. But, yeah, just getting them to look actually into the toilet. Cause Concentrate. The... Concentrate, it's mm. a big mm. issue. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, you've got a sucker, a little plastic sucker, holding yes. it up onto the rim. Yes. Now, with constant flushing, yes. you know, potentially that could come off. We haven't had one come off yet. Yeah. If it did, though... But if it did, I... You know, yes, it, doesn't, it doesn't... It's it doesn't, the doesn't, plumber's doesn't, job to yes. get it from being no, down in the bottom, or what happens? It just sits on the top. It doesn't actually go down with the flush. Mm. But we haven't actually had one to come off. No, and and tried, in tropical yeah. climates, where it's like 35 degrees plus well, in the day temperature? we had 42 degrees in Melbourne. No problem. Within the last couple of weeks mm. and mm. quite a few days running, wasn't a problem. Didn't go. It's mm. actually the coolest room, they say, in the house. If you're looking at that age group, but you said, I think, from 3 to 12, mm -hmm. um, the little pictures you've got look a little bit unsophisticated to me. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps you could look at something a little bit more yeah, cartoonish yeah, or something. We can put anything yeah. on there. Yeah. It was just a starting point at this point. Maybe Elle McPherson yeah. for the 12 year old. Yeah. Yeah. And the <laughs> other thing is just um, potentially is it possible, and I know cost is an issue, mm -hmm. to put them in packs of three so that there is a different target and you can swap them over so no yes. one ever knows which target is in the toilet. Oh yeah, certainly. That yep. could be an option to look at. Summing up, Alison. Look, uh, you convinced me about the cleaning. I was a bit worried about that. But I think the next evolution of this would, would to actually make it flushable or biodegradable in some way so that if it did get stuck down the toilet, it's no mm. issue. Chris? Yes, no, I, I think that you've you made a big improvement over the sort of floating rings and ping-pong balls and all the rest of it, which you actually had to get into the toilet yeah. before the kid gets there. Well, that's yeah. not going to happen in a preschool. You've actually got something you can permanently leave there. Tremendous, a tremendous innovation, really, in terms of changing the way that's done. And I think um, you've got a price of $12, but what I was interested to see in is that your wholesale price is $6, mm -hmm. and, and that's great because a lot of stockers do want that 100% markup, so mm. you're going to have a good chance of getting it into the stores. Yes. That's yeah. fantastic. Thank you. Well Thank you. done. I'm sure you'll piss it in. <laughs> <laughs> Please thank Joanna and Daniel Holmes. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, which invention will win tonight? We'll find out in a bit, but first, what are the inventors thinking? Tummy in knots before we started, but as yeah. soon as I sat down, I thought, oh, OK, this is all right. When Joe's nervous, it's just yuck, yuck, I yuck, I usually talk, so yeah. So I did quite well not getting... Not a problem. ..letting Daniel get a word and... Yeah. <laughs> Probably would have liked to have uh, leveraged on the, the safety factor a little bit more, the fact that, you know, we're actually out there to protect loads from falling off to safeguard both the vehicle user and the road user, so that was something we would have liked to have uh, sort of hit home a little bit more. I, I've seen the new Inventor show from quite a, a way time back, and I always thought, gee, I'd love to be on that show, so I'm pretty glad to be here today. 
Tonight's winner could, at the end of this year, be named our Inventor of the Year. Will it be the Ute-expanding cargo cage, the convenient and safe valve safety lockout, or the toilet training we target? Let's look firstly at originality. Chris Russell, which is the most original and why? Yes, well, for me, I can't pick between two of the inventions tonight, the Wii Target and the Valve Safety Lockout for originality. They're the two original ones. Now, both of them, there are other ways of doing it. You know, with the Valve Safety Lockout, you can, you can you know, put a yeah. padlock on, you can put covers on. With the Wii Target, you have things that float around in the loo. But neither of them are really that satisfactory. No, well, so this is a, a completely original new approach in both cases, in my well, opinion. Well, I don't... I actually... I rate the Valve Safety Lockout just above um, the Wii Target on originality just because it's a totally new way of locking it out. It's not... It, like you said, it's not um, locking the actuator, it's locking the valve itself, mm. which takes that human error out of it. It's a totally new approach. Well, I had a uh, valve safety lockout um, in my mind for the most original, but after seeing the Wii Target, you know, you just keep shaking your head thinking it is a very original idea. And well, no one's used the heat sensitive ink no. before. For design, I, I went with the, the cargo cage um, and also the, the heat sensitive ink on the the Wii target, but then similarly no, I went for valve with safety valve safety lockout, lockout I think. Because yeah, think... it's a very neat design yeah. and, and um, it fits neat, nicely underneath. I mean, really, I to only see the no... market of those with those electric ones and, and it really fits nicely underneath the electric actuator. I think the criteria that really does um, stand out here for, for between them is marketability. Yeah, Because that exactly. Wii target, they have got a massive market Yeah, for but Wii they've target. got a lot of competition as well. There's a well, lot of other products yes and no. out there. I don't think people can be bothered, to be honest, with having to say, wait, Johnny, don't go to the loo, you know, we've got to throw these little floating things in before you go. He's going to say, forget it. And the average preschool teacher, not going to happen. But marketability, I mean, I can't see that the valve safety lockout doesn't just completely um, blitz that. But yeah, there are a lot of other ways of doing that. No, you can you can put covers over yeah, the top as as and Chris... they're all accepted by work cover, you know, it's no, all something No, but Chris, as do. soon as you've got something, a product that is safer, that is, more, like, it's it's... It designed out the human error factor. It's going to it's going to dominate the market, and it's got a massive market in Australia and overseas. I think in marketability, the valve safety lockout is a standout. Look, uh, cargo cage, I think, is going to really appeal to people who have a twin cab use. I think the you know the take up of that has tripled in the last ten sure. years, just in Australia alone. Finally, need. Yeah, which one do we need most? Well, it's very hard to go past the things that make a big difference to safety. And the valve safety lockout, you know, you've got to have some system which is absolutely foolproof. You can put all the tags on the switches to say don't do it, but at the end of the day when you're just relying on an electric Come lockout on. or something, someone can actually I so want to disagree with you, but I don't. You can't. I there actually you go. agree with you on that one, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I put need very, very high up. You know, in in my mind, I was thinking it's, it's the parents cleaning those bathrooms. It's that smell coming out of the grout that my girlfriends tell me about. Who is going to win? Let's begin with you, Alison. I'm going to go for the cargo cage because oh, I think it's a fantastic right. design and I think the original aspect of it, which is the fact that you don't need to make modif modifications to the ute, it, it just rates it right up there okay. for me. Chris? Well, you, you've achieved your target of being disagreeing with me because I'm going to go for the Wii target. <laughs> well, I think Wii target's really, really cute. Um, but I like the valve safety lockout. I have to say, so, I disagree. We have a three-way tie, so what you need to do in the few moments we have left is uh, keep talking. There's been some wonderful argumentative feastiness, but what we really need now is a spirit of consensus and love to permeate the room and for you to come up with a <laughs> choice as winner that you are all reasonably happy with. Good luck. I'm off. All right, well, Christine, I mean, we do these based on criteria. So talk to me about marketability, about why you would rank the, why you think that the uh, valve safety lockout has got a greater market potential than the Wii Target. You know, there's, there's just a myriad of industries I that use agree valves. I Christine on that one. And, mm. and in many of these instances, working with hot, molten sugar... Mm. No, I understand that, things. but they have a lot of alternatives. Yes, but a lot yeah, of the alternatives involve alternatives? shutting down the mm. entire plant. And how many alternatives are there to help your child mm. find the sweet spot? There's heaps mm. of them. They can't mm. go past the valve. Safety lockout from that point of view that across all the industries we could export this. He has this patented 
in all the countries around mm. the world. Mm. Okay, where does that um, leave you? Yeah, Chris, look, I do. Yeah, I, I do think the valve safety lock is pretty special for me. Um, the the, car, uh, the cargo cage and that really, I couldn't really decide between them, and it was just probably a gut feeling that I just think the cargo cage mm. has got a really big market. And Chris, where does well, it look, they were close for me too. I'm I'm comfortable with a valve safety lock out there. Yes. Both fantastic inventions, but but I'm comfortable with that as a winner. Yes, you're all comfortable with yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Then the winner okay. tonight. Well, the valve safety lockout after a tie break Charles Shooter who works in sugar refineries is going back to his sugar refineries a happy man Charles Shooter our winner well done Charles congratulations thank you very much nerve wracking out the back there Charles is in the Fantastic. running to be named our inventor of the year well what did you think did they get it right if you'd like to vote for the new inventors people's choice award pick your fave and text one for the cargo cage two for the valve safety lockout or three for the wee target to one triple nine triple two zero Call 1902 or go to our website abc.net.au slash new inventors. Thanks to our judges. Well done. Over time tonight. And a huge round of applause for the wonderful inventors. Before we go, the German writer Bertolt Brecht said today every invention is received with a cry of triumph which soon turns into a cry of fear. Let's see if that's right. See you next week. Good night. We know that last week the panel picked Carl Goodwin from Adelaide and his Move Ya Bastard, but what did you pick as the people's choice? There was the Move Ya Bastard, the Gopher Buggy and the Cuff Safe. And you picked the Cuff Safe.